Now can somebody know how do I simplify this derivative? Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, is it a, why is it a total differential instead of a partial? Why is it a total differential instead of a partial? Because if I wrote down this, okay, so, so if I just uh, look at this thing, u of ut plus x0 and t, uh, this is a function of how, what variables? Uh, only t. Only t, right. So, so if I fix x0 and fix t, it's only a function of t, right? Or, I mean, you can also think of it as a function of x0 and t. In this case, I should be writing a partial derivative. right? So it basically depends on how you look at this function. Yes? Sorry? The small u is a solution of this differential equation. Right, so, so here we always write the small u. Uh, so let's say the active variable here is only t. Right, so then I can write it as a, uh, just an ordinary derivative. So, uh, who can tell me how to simplify this derivative? Or how does it relate to the partial derivative of the function u? Chain rule, yes. Very good intuition. How do you use chain rule here? Right, it's equal to partial u partial t that takes care of this variable. You have plus something, right? And then partial of the first of ut plus x0. Okay, so you have partial ut plus x0 partial t. Well, actually, oh, this is d, right? Times what? Uh, partial u. Partial x, right? At right. that location. All right. Further simplify. What is this derivative? It's u, right? And this is equal to what according to our partial differential equation? Zero, right? Okay, so here we have correctly figured out by doing mathematics, not just from observation, that if you travel along a slope, which is, corresponds to the, one of these characteristic lines, right, then my solution should have a derivative of zero which means the solution doesn't change along each individual characteristic line. Right? Any questions on this? So this is actually how we are going to verify how accurate our numerical solution is on this equation. Because yeah, otherwise we, we don't know if our solution is right or wrong. Yes? Um, so it's for this equation, uh, the characteristic lines are straight lines, but not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily for all the cases. For example, if the right hand side is not equal to zero but equal to something, then after you are doing all this math, right? So, so for example, let me just uh, give you a. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. So, for example, if this is a function g, then after you are doing all the math, this is equal to g, right? That means, um, well, let me take it back. In this case, my characteristic line is still going to be a straight line because uh, u would be a changing function along the characteristic line. So, so the characteristic line is still going to be defined as these lines. But instead of the solution being constant along these lines, you can actually solve the solution along these lines as if they are ordinary differential equations. Does it make sense? Yeah. So so in some in some in some sense the ODE case, this particular case, is a special case of this case with u equal to zero. So if u equal to zero, what are the characteristic lines?
They are just uh, x equal to 0 times t plus x0. They are just going straight up, right? Okay, so in the ODE case, the, the theory of characteristic lines just tells you that you can solve for each individual x as an ODE, which is obvious, right? And uh, even for this equation, it is telling you even though the right hand side is not zero, it just tells you you can solve the solution. The solution is decoupled in between different characteristic lines. If you want the solution here, for example, if I want the solution here, you only need to know the initial condition at this point and just solve along this line. All right, that's one way to solve numerically this partial differential equation is to figure out the characteristic lines and then solve along the characteristic line as if it is an ODE. All right, any questions on that? So when would it not be? Uh, when would it be not straight lines? The only uh, the the when would be if this big U is not a constant. All right. So so that uh, that happens uh, if U is an explicit function of time or when U is a function of the small U. Right. So in both cases, the solution would change and U is not going to be a constant. Okay. Getting there. Getting there. Okay.